are the knights dedicated to Christ and his holy mother. We are the Knights of St. Michael. We are living in unprecedented times, a time foretold from the dawn of creation. And you, my friend, have been chosen by God to help lead the world through one of the greatest epic battles that has ever taken place on planet Earth. Cardinal George has recently warned Christians to beware. He said it will become harder and harder to remain steadfast in the faith and that the Catholic faith could eventually be driven underground. He continued by saying, Mothers, teach your children to become martyrs. John Paul the Great also challenged over two million young people in Rome when he asked them to be willing to suffer martyrdom for the faith. Should we fear this looming and foreboding future, or should we embrace it? The Bible said, put on the armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the deceits of the devil. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power, against rulers of the world of darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. We as a church are fighting against New Age propaganda, witchcraft, reincarnation, astrology, palm reading, psychic power. Evil is mounting, and at times it feels there is nothing we can do to stop it. What can we do to turn this New Age tide of evil that is engulfing modern civilization? Surprisingly, the answer is simple. Recourse to the Mother of God, for she will not abandon us. Brace yourself for one of the simplest, yet most effective things you could ever do to bring about peace in an unpeaceful world. The nights are on now. It's night time. disciples came to him saying, Tell us, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the consummation of the world? There shall arise false Christs and false prophets, who shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch as to deceive even the elect. Take heed that no man seduce you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will seduce many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be pestilence and famine and earthquakes. Now all these are but the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall put you to death. And you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And because iniquity hath abounded, charity shall grow cold. Many shall be scandalized, and shall betray and hate one another. But he that shall persevere to the end shall be saved. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a testimony to all nations. And then shall the consummation come. When therefore you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Then they that are in Judea, let them flee to the mountains. And he that is in the field, let him not go back to take his coat. For then there shall be a great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. 
and immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall, and the powers of heaven shall be moved. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, for they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. For as lightning comes out of the east and appears even into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. My Father shall send his angels with trumpet and great voice, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the furthest parts of the heavens to the utmost bounds of them. Behold, I have told it to you beforehand. Welcome to WARN World News, reporting today from St. Michael's Tower. In 1917, the Mother of God appeared in Fatima, Portugal, and begged the people to pray the rosary, a simple prayer she had given to the church centuries before. This devotion is a combination of prayers and meditation on the life of Jesus and His Blessed Mother. We realized as we researched this project, who gave us these prayers? It was God Himself. They're prayers from heaven, so to speak. For example, the words of the Lord's Prayer were first spoken by Jesus when the apostles asked him how they should pray. And it was 30 years before when the world was given the words of the first part of the Hail Mary. It was first spoken by the Archangel Gabriel, asking the humble virgin to consent to become the mother of God. It is important to understand that the Our Father and the angelic salutation were not invented by any earthly creature. They are sanctified words given to us by heaven itself. Without a doubt, they have been in continuous use as prayers throughout church history. But it has only been about since St. Dominic's time that the Marian Rosary as we know it has existed. St. Dominic, who is said to have received it directly from the Blessed Virgin, prophesied, one day, through the rosary and scapular, she will save the world. Less than 100 years ago, the Blessed Mother appeared to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal, during a time when Europe was involved in an extremely bloody war. Almost 16 million people were killed in World War I, making it one of the deadliest conflicts in history. She prophesied even more upcoming wars and tribulations throughout the nations. Then she begged the children, pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world. Six different times she appeared to the children and each time requested that they pray the rosary every day. Many years later, Sister Lucia said, in these last times in which we live, the Most Holy Virgin has given a new value to the recitation of the Holy Rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. There we have it, a foolproof peace plan from heaven. Over and over, the Heavenly Lady's request remains the same. Pray the Rosary every day in order to obtain world peace. Signing off from WARN World News, I'm Mary. And I'm Dan. You have been warned. Hello, everyone. It's time for Common Sense. Today, joining us via satellite is Miss Global Village, the winner of the coveted beauty pageant title. Welcome, Miss Global Village. Hello, Miss Liz. Among her many duties, she travels around the world as a spokesperson for liberated women seeking global spirituality. So, what is your mission? 
I stand before you today, chosen by world leaders to represent the poorest of the poor. From the streets of Calcutta to the huts of Africa and the ghetto of Harlem, I am their voice, seeking equality in all things, sex education, women's health care, and equal opportunity. Praise be to Mother Earth. Our grand mission is world peace. You certainly did not take on an easy project. Every day the newscasts bombard us with another horrific story of disease, starvation, or the newest laser weapons. The world can be a scary place. If history has proven anything, it's that people can be dangerously cruel. Hitler, Stalin, Genghis Khan, Osama bin Laden, Jack the Ripper. Charles Manson, Mao Zedong, precisely. Did you notice the people you speak of were all men? Power hungry, greedy, evil men? Fortunately, the Women's Liberation Council has been able to spotlight this Pandora's box and expose the madness. And how will this help us on our way to global bliss? The answer is, sweetheart, to return to the beginning when God was a woman and humanity sought inner wisdom instead of war. We women have set a goal to destroy the foundations of the ancient male-dominated world in order to make way for an epoch age of unity, oneness, and cosmic awareness. Through science and education, we will achieve our feminine vision of hope and peace. Hi, oh my. You will have returned to the, the very beginning of paganism, human sacrifice and all that. Is this really your answer to world peace? The Bible warns over and over against this age-old pagan goddess worship. And where has your age-old Bible gotten us, sweetheart? All we have to do is open a history book to see your program hasn't worked. The liberated women are aiming higher. One mind, one faith, one family, one world. Oh, I gotcha. Uh, whether the rest of us like it or not. But how is this one world transformation possible? I mean, most people are not the least bit interested in your one world dictatorship or goddess religion. Sweetheart, where have you been? Our new age plans are already set in motion. The world is being re-educated as we speak through mass media, movies, and television. One day you will open your eyes to realize the tidal wave has already swept the planet. As of yet, it is only the male religion that divides us. We know that unity will not flower from these worn out dogmas and rituals. Let them go and join a religious force with the potential to unify the world. Join with us to heal Mother Earth and renew her life force. It is time for change, a new age of peace, uniting this small global village to our vast universe. The New Age movement is one that promises world peace, which is admirable. But the methods it promotes to achieve these goals are purely sinister. I appreciate your efforts, sweetheart, but now let's say it's time for common sense. This devious strategy is as old as time itself bringing back pagan goddess worship, reincarnation, and the power of the occult. It's a well-organized plan to deceive God's people and destroy the only true way to world peace, Jesus. Your movement is filled with witchcraft. You consult the dead and follow astrology, not to mention tarot cards, crystals, palm readings, and Ouija boards. St. Paul warned, in the last times, some men will abandon their faith. They will obey lying spirits and follow doctrines of the devil. Pretty ironic, isn't it? We were warned to reject these lies from the beginning, even before Satan's newest movement ever happened. Satan has boasted he will rule the world, but remember, it is God who created this world, and he created Satan himself. So believe me, there's no contest. No. Next time you see Miss Global Village and she shows up in your neighborhood, know what really lies under the compassionate and beautiful exterior. Jesus told us there would be many false prophets, and he said, let no man or woman seduce you. I'm Miss Liz, and that's common sense.
So what's the crisis this time, Minnie? I've just come across the most gruesome, hideous lies. It says here in our own history of hell that his mother opened our gates and showed humans what actually happens down here. Minnie, you shouldn't be looking at that. You shouldn't have access to that part of history. How did you get the password? Just tell me it isn't true. What about our privacy? We stay out of their territory and they stay out of ours. That's what I told you. But really, we don't have that kind of power. What do you mean? Mr. Positive, my whole world is falling apart down here. Did she really show three little kids what it's like in hell? I'm afraid so. I was there. What you're reading is my memoir of the entire incident. It was devastating. The worst part is we were having a particularly good day. Souls were falling like snowflakes into the flames. And there she was, Mary. Opened the earth and showed them the great sea of fire with hideous demons and human souls all glowing and floating about. You mean people actually saw what we do to them when they get here? I thought our reign was over. This is major devastating. If they find out what goes on down here, we're out of a job. Wasn't there anything you could do? We were defenseless. It was a good thing the kids were such wimps because they were so terrified of the vision it only lasted an instant. By the time we realized what was happening, the earth was closed up and we were alone and in shock. How dare that meddlesome woman come into our realm? Who does she think she is? She can't mess around with you. Shh. Minnie. Quiet. Her power is far beyond anything you can comprehend. Are you afraid? She's a mere human. We're great, powerful spirits. She's only flesh and blood. That's true. But so was he. And she's his mother. Remember, she's the queen of heaven. And all the angels are subject to her. Have you totally lost it? We've spent centuries convincing humans she's no different than they are. She's insignificant. That's right. And they believe us, don't they? Ever since she has stepped into our territory, we've redoubled our efforts against her. We've spread even more confusion and doubt. And yes, most importantly, we've labeled her as a false idol and brainwashed humans to ignore her. I just can't get over that she's more powerful than you. A pathetic earthly woman? This is hard. She actually had the power to open the gates of hell for the whole world to see us. I feel so victimized, so vulnerable, so defeated. Don't worry about it, Minnie. Other than a few diehard Catholics, they've all forgotten about it anyway. We've totally convinced them there's no such place as hell. And we've done a good job of mocking the whole alleged incident of Fatima and changed the history books accordingly. Tell me one thing. Was this the same time she came from heaven and appeared to three Fatima kids, telling them how the rosary could defeat us? Yes, it is. She told them to pray a rosary oh. every day. But we put a fast stop to that. We simply tell them it's boring, it's praying to idols, and it takes too much time. There are so many more meaningful prayers to say. Then how do we deal with the other problem, now that they know what goes on down here? First, we discredit everything that has to do with Fatima, especially the rosary. And then we tell them there's no sin, and of course, there's no hell. Mr. Positive, I hear you, but the truth about hell is right here in plain sight for anyone to find it. True, but remember, we're the good guys now. They believe everything we say, and I promise you, that entire Fatima story is a lie. 
I believe you, Mr. Positive. And things are already looking up. Here comes another batch. Going, Going to, to hell, hell in a handbasket. Hand The Blessed Virgin Mary appeared on July 13, 1917, to Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta Marto, who were tending sheep near the small village of Fatima, Portugal. The Blessed Virgin opened her hands, and a beam of light penetrated the earth. They could see a vast sea of fire. Plunged in the flames were demons and lost souls, as if they were red-hot coals transparent and bronze. Human forms floated about in the inferno, lifted up by the flames which issued from them, falling on all sides as sparks fall in a great blaze without weight. The devils could be distinguished by horrible and loathsome forms of frightful animals, but transparent like black coals that have turned red hot. Shrieks and groans of despair horrified them and caused them to tremble with fear. The Blessed Virgin, with unspeakable sadness and tenderness, told the children, You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. Hold it. Mary, are you sure the story's true? A lot of people say there's no such thing as hell anymore. Derek, this is one of the most revealing stories of modern times, because it confirms the reality of heaven and how. This vision reminds us of the only thing that counts, our eternity. Plus, this is a truth of our Catholic faith, whether we like it or not. And this apparition of Fatima is a reminder from heaven that hell does exist. Not only that, Jesus also told us that hell is real. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. God will allow us to choose our own destiny. He will not force anyone to love or obey him. And listen, there's something else that happened at Fatima that proved it was true. At the end of six months' time, many people were still skeptical, and they demanded there be a miracle confirming what the children said was true. So... Those people didn't believe the story about heaven and hell either? No, they wanted proof, and the Blessed Mother gave them exactly what they asked for. The night before October 13th, it had rained very hard, and everyone was wet and covered with mud. That day during the vision, suddenly the sun was seen spinning in the sky by about 70,000 people. The sun seemed to flicker on and off, it cast rays in many directions and painted everything different colors. The trees, the people, the sky and the ground. Then everything became still and quiet. And at a certain moment, the sun appeared to stop spinning and began to fall down from the sky. Whoa. Everyone saw the sun falling to the earth? Did they all run and scream? Yeah. I would have been out of there. Derek, the sun is falling. Where would you run to? Oh, yeah. All right, well, it's almost over. At the end of the miracle, thousands of people looked around and were amazed to see their clothes were clean and dry. Each one was even more overwhelmed as they began to realize the meaning of Our Lady's visit to Earth, the rosary. Man, heaven went through a lot of trouble simply to tell people to pray the rosary. And warn us about hell. Uh-huh. Maybe we should try saying the rosary. I think you're right. We're supposed to say one every single day. Have you guys prayed one yet today? Let's say, Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. What can we do to turn this tide of evil that is engulfing our planet? Is there any answer to New Age propaganda, witchcraft, abortion, euthanasia, pornography, or child abuse? Yes. This is heaven's answer to world peace. We must pray the rosary every day. The answer is simple. 
but at the same time, it's one of the hardest things to do in this high-speed, modern-day culture. Nevertheless, Our Lady insists that we pray the Rosary every day and actually focus and concentrate on the events of the life of her son. At Fatima, the Most Holy Virgin confirms this truth emphatically in each of her apparitions. May 13th, pray the Rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. June 13th, pray the Rosary each day. July 13th, I want you to come here on the 13th of next month and to continue praying the Rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war because only she can help you. August 19th, I want you to continue going to the Kovada area on the 13th and to continue praying the Rosary every day. September 13th, Continue to say the rosary to obtain the end of the war. October 13th. I am Our Lady of the Rosary. Continue to say the rosary every day. Mary came from heaven to warn us of the impending dangers of these epic times. And she did promise, in the end, her immaculate heart will triumph. Every day, the newscasts bombard us with another horrific. And it takes too much time. There are so many more meaningful prayers to say. Can I, can I do that one more time into that camera? Thank you. Sorry.